good evening. The 44th Annual Spring Graduate Recognition Ceremony of Ohio University Southern will now begin. Will everyone please stand for the invocation and pledge to the flag by graduating student Shannon Frizee, followed by the playing of the national anthem. Please bow your heads for the invocation. On this day of celebration, let us be thankful for its blessings and opportunities and for its challenges. We pray for the strength and the wisdom to use each day in service to our families and to our communities. May we find inside ourselves the grace that resides in the enduring values of our culture. May we become productive citizens and stewards of the earth. Amen. Please join with me in the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Be seated. Hello, my name is Marty Conley. As an alumnus of Ohio University, I'm honored to be here this evening. I earned my Bachelor of Science in Applied Management degree in 2019, and I now serve on the Ohio University Southern Coordinating Council. Welcome family and friends to the Ohio University Southern Graduation Recognition Ceremony. At our first graduate recognition ceremony in 1981, we honored 46 total graduates. As we celebrate the successful completion of the spring semester, I'm pleased to announce that 117 Southern students have completed their studies and will soon earn degrees from Ohio University, totaling 62 associate's degrees, 56 bachelor's degree, and one master's degree. Today, we have 58 graduates participating in the ceremony. All of the names of the graduates being recognized today are listed in the program. And those who have been named the top student in their respective area of study have been identified. Students who have attained Latin honors can be identified by the braided cords draped around their shoulders. Gold, summa cum laude, silver, magna cum laude, and bronze, cum laude. At this time, I would like to recognize the individuals on the platform and in the audience who are participating in the program. Please hold your applause until the end. Dr. Deborah Marinsky, Intern Dean of Ohio University Southern and the presiding officer of today's ceremony. Dana Scott, Ohio University Southern Associate Professor of Nursing. Dr. Joy Scheidel, Ohio University Southern Associate Professor of Social Work. Shannon Frizee, student representative recently named one of Ohio University's outstanding graduates, and Robert Pleasant, Director of Student Services. Members of the staff and administration and the distinguished faculty of Ohio University Southern, please join me in recognition applause. <laughs> Finally, I would like to commend Tina Canner, Executive Assistant, for co coordinating today's ceremony and the facilities management crew for the physical arrangements of the Schaefer Courtyard. 
Thank you. Ohio University Southern's commitment to serving Southeast Ohio began in 1956, holding its first classes at Ironton High School for cadet teachers. Educational needs grew and in the late 1970s and continued through the 1980s. The first campus building was completed in 1985. More than 35 years later, we have four academic buildings located on the southern campus. We are very proud of our history and look forward to new and exciting opportunities in the future. At this time, I would like to turn the podium over to Dr. Deborah Marinsky. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Ohio University Southern's graduation recognition ceremony. It is an honor to stand before you and participate in this very special event as we acknowledge and congratulate the success of this year's graduating class. At this time, I would like to turn the podium over to Dr. Joy Scheidel. Good evening, everyone. What a beautiful night it is for us to be here to celebrate all of our graduates. These students have had their education disrupted by COVID, had to practice resilience and adapting to the new mode of learning online, and have shown amazing persistence in overcoming obstacles. I'm honored to represent the faculty of Ohio University Southern in congratulating each and every one of them on your graduation. My favorite parts of the graduation season involve watching the joy and pride of students as they receive job offers, are accepted into master's programs or other higher education programs, pass their certification exams, take graduation pictures, decorate their caps in amazingly creative ways, and look forward to the next step of your journeys. I know many of you have struggled with decisions about whether or not to continue your schooling when life circumstances made your educational goals hard. You have studied while your kids are asleep, you attend meetings with your professors during your work lunch hour. You learned who to carpool with to and from campus to save money. And you cried in our offices as you shared your concerns and your struggles. And we are blessed to be the ones that can empathize and encourage you. We see your hard work, we see your sacrifices, and we see your successes. You guys have made it. It may have taken you two years, four years, and some of you might have taken a little bit longer, but you all persisted. The faculty at Ohio University Southern are so very proud of you, and we recognize our privilege in teaching you. So graduates, again, congratulations and good luck. At our graduation recognition ceremony, we always like to recognize people, not just our students, but our faculty and staff that have excelled and have demonstrated their excellence to our students, to our campus, and to our community. So I have the pleasure of announcing two awards that the faculty and staff on this campus have chosen for 2023. The first award is the Outstanding Faculty Member, which goes to Dr. Miranda Clement. She's here. In the nomination letter for Dr. Clement, it was stated that she, quote, consistently goes above and beyond for her students and for the nursing program overall ensuring that her students have the best possible experience in her courses and that they have a nursing program and a campus that they can be proud of. I attended today's nursing pinning ceremony and several of the students recognized Dr. Clement as caring, smart, helpful, and an enthusiastic professor who they felt always put them first and was always there for them. I would also add that Dr. Clement is committed to serving our campus and is always willing to support her colleagues. Because of her dedication, <clears throat> excuse me, to her students 
and to the campus community, Dr. Clement recently received promotion to Associate Professor of Instruction in Nursing. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Miranda Clement. The second award is for the outstanding staff member. This is the first year we are giving this award. All of the staff on this campus are amazing, and they play such an important role in getting us all here tonight. With that, I am excited to announce that the outstanding staff member is Mr. Robert Pleasant. <laughs> In his nomination, it was stated that, quote, Robert has an impact on so many facets concerning this campus. He works with all departments on various projects while maintaining his own workload. His vision helps lead this campus community and student, student engagement. He sets an example for his coworkers and motivates us all to be involved with our students and our community. I have witnessed how hard Mr. Pleasant works for our students, for all of our staff, and for our faculty, and for this community. I also know how hard he has worked for me, and how much he has helped me. Mr. Pleasant truly exemplifies what it means to be an outstanding member of this campus and a champion for our community. I am so proud of his work and honored to recognize him as the outstanding staff member. Please join me in congratulating Mr. Robert Pleasant. Good evening, everyone. Let me say to all the graduates, congratulations, job well done. I have the honor of presenting the Spirit of Southern Award. The recipient of this award is selected by a committee of representing faculty and staff and has demonstrated not only academic success, but also distinction in involvement and contributions to the campus and community as a whole. This year's recipient has shown her commitment to excellence and willingness to go above and beyond for others. Ms. Shannon Frizee is deeply committed to the Bobcat community. She has actively participated in university activities, attending campus events, and in volunteering to support student organizations and other initiatives. She has helped to organize fundraising events and community outreach projects, such as a book drive for local elementary school students and a charity 5K run to benefit local youth organizations. Ms. Frizee has served in the Office of Student Services as an undergraduate assistant, assisting students with various needs. She participates in department activities, including the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Community Celebration, peer advisor for College Credit Plus program, and assisting in the coordination of the Clothesline Project to raise awareness regarding domestic violence. One of the nominations uh, submitted that we received described Ms. Frizee as a dedicated and tenacious student, a natural leader, and an active and engaged member of Ohio University Southern. Her work ethic, accountability, and personality exemplify the best of Ohio University Southern, and I am confident that she will continue to make a positive impact in the field of middle childhood education and beyond. It is my honor and my great privilege to present this 2023 Spirit of Southern Award to Ms. Shannon Frizee. It is now time to recognize the 2023 recipient 
of the Dr. Dan Evans Alumni Leadership Award. This award is presented to Ohio University Southern graduates who are making a difference as leaders in their communities. On behalf of Ohio Southern, I would like to congratulate this year's recipient, Josh Blanton. Josh graduated from Ohio University Southern with his bachelor's degree in Health Services Administration in 2007, and later his master's in Business Administration in 2013. He has been instrumental in effecting change in Ashland, Kentucky by using his life experiences to enrich the lives of, of others. Through his participation in the Southern I Am Speaker Series, Josh told of his Appalachian roots, his personal family history and issues, and the events that led him to run for office. In 2020, Josh was elected as city commissioner for the city of Ashland, becoming just the third person elected as a first-time candidate. And he was recently re-elected in 2022. Before he became a city commissioner, he was already taking a leadership role in the community using the leadership skills he learned at Southern. Josh continues to use his experiences to connect to community members and to make those who are often invisible seen and heard. He was instrumental in the founding of Ashland for Change, an organization that seeks to amplify the voices of marginalized community members and empowers people to take action to create the changes they want to see in their community. Josh serves and volunteers for multiple organizations, including the Highlands Museum, Build Ashland, Foundation for the Tri-State, CASA, and the United Way. He has also been a major driver for the renaissance of downtown Ashland. Josh has emerged as an, as an inspiring leader for our citizen and is someone who will, will help lead our area into the future. Please join me in congratulating Josh Blanton on being selected as this year's recipient of the Dan Evans Alumni Leadership Award. I am now honored to introduce our keynote speaker for tonight's ceremony, Mr. Eric Brown. Eric is a versatile writer, scholar, and mentor who weaves his passion for storytelling into a tapestry of lifelong learning. Holding a Bachelor of English and a Master of Arts in Organizational Communications from Ohio University, as well as a Master of Fine Arts in Creative Writing and a Master of Arts in English from Southern New Hampshire University, Her Eric has honed a diverse skill set in creative writing, communication, and English literature. His role as Ohio University Southern's career and leadership coach and adjunct instructor of English further showcases his unwavering dedication to nurturing talent beyond the confines of the classroom to the professional world, where he helps students and alums alike develop their skills in leadership and career development. He also serves as a mentor at Southern New Hampshire University, illuminating literary and rhetorical paths for English graduate capstone students sharpening their writing abilities, and helping them develop their own unique voices in the academic world. 
Eric's accolades include published works in esteemed outlets like daily science fiction and thought-provoking presentations at conferences such as the Tri-State Conference on Diversity and Inclusion, the Popular Culture National Conference, and the Association of Colleges for Tutoring and Learning Assistance. His engaging talks on inclusivity through horror, Stephen King, and student tutor training reveal his dynamic range of interests. Eric's experiences have forged a unique synthesis of storytelling, mastery, educational prowess, and community leadership. His enthusiasm for empowering others combined with his extensive knowledge in writing and education render him an invaluable asset to both the academic and the literary realms. As a champion of personal growth and a catalyst for change, Eric's unwavering dedication inspires those around him, sculpting the future of writing and education one word at a time. Please join me in wel welcoming Mr. Eric Brown. Once upon a time, there lived an ancient king who decided it was time to give up his crown. Having no heirs or trusted advisors who could take up the responsibilities of the land, he decided to hold an event to find the bravest citizen in the kingdom. Many noble men and women and hundreds of villagers and paupers gathered in anticipation. At last, the king announced the competition. I wish, the king said, to find who among you is the bravest of all. So I have a dangerous mission for you. This river in front of you is full of crocodiles. The one bravest among you who swims across and reaches the other side shall have my throne. Those gathered at the edge of the river gasped as suddenly the water boiled and belched with the quaking of the monstrous beasts beneath the murky waters. How could we pass this test? Some whispered. The king has gone mad, others exclaimed. Others joked and jostled. There were screams and swoons. But just as the clamor of the crocodiles began to swell, overtaking the lamentations of the people, something at the water's edge made a terrific splash. A young man had jumped into the waters and was paddling for a, his very life. The crocodiles chomped their jaws and whipped their tails, but the young man only swam with more determination. The masses were screaming in excitement as the young man reached the other side. The king was delighted to see such a brave young man. He sent a boat to bring him back and ordered his servants to begin the celebrations, for a new ruler had been found. The king approached the young man and asked him to address his people. The young man agreed, wiped the muck of the river from his face, and shouted, First of all, I would like to know who has pushed me and threw me into the river. Once upon a time. So there are a lot of power in those words. So there's just four words, and you really don't need to say any more than that. You just know something big is coming. You may not know the precise contents. You may not recognize the specific characters. You may not have uh, any notion of the exact action that is about to unfold. But you are ready all the same to take on these unknowns, the uncertainties, or the ambiguities. You are ready to succumb to the world of the story. 
It's also incredibly universal. Uh, nearly every culture and language has its own variation. In Romance languages, for example, it translates to, there was once. Others translate the phrase to be loosely, in some kingdom, in some land, or of this day. These tales, whether passed down orally or written down, are often woven with rich imagery, vivid characters, and unforgettable lessons that linger long after the story has ended. Something like, the slotted spoon can't catch much soup, but it can catch the potato. Or meeting a nice stranger or wolf off the beaten path of the forest is not the same as meeting a good stranger. There are other morals or lessons we can interpret for ourselves. For example, secure your footwear before pummeling down the steps of a palace before the clock strikes midnight. Or, when performing a routine home invasion, make sure to sample and give a detailed review of each item in the house to find the one that's just right for you before the multi-generational -gener uh, bears that lease the place come back. Of course, some lessons don't always jive well with our contemporary understanding of the world, uh, nor would their original intentions be all that fantastic for any kind of source of wisdom. The princess and the frog, for example. No, let's get one thing straight. Uh, the weary princess only kissed one frog, a charming prince who happened to be under a spell. Therefore, you need not kiss many frogs before finding the right one. However, frog kissing is necessary. Therefore, even though they're gross and won't leave you alone, why not give them a chance? No, no. But I do love fairy tales. My favorite is Hans Christian Andersen's The Little Mermaid. So I'll give you a brief synopsis in case you've, you're not familiar. So The Little Mermaid longs to be something other or greater than what she is. She seeks to have an adventure, to see new things, to learn the human experience in a way, any way that she can. And that need or quest for knowledge and experience is so incredibly powerful and unique. To be bold and brave enough to take a risk or to be bold or brave enough to learn something new, to be willing to sacrifice and even play with the fate you thought you had to further yourself. Granted, in the original Anderson version of the narrative, the sea witch, whom the Little Mermaid trades her voice to grow legs, rips her tongue out and curses the mermaid so that every step she takes on land, however graceful, feels like the mermaid is walking on jagged razor blades. But, you know, despite these little setbacks, I'd like to think that she had a swell time in her tenure as a human. Come to think of it, near the conclusion of the story, the mermaid learns from her sisters that all she has to do to renege on the deal with the sea witch is to straight up murder the prince uh, with a cleaver. So the original tales really were a trip. But that part of the story doesn't have a whole lot to do with uh, the message I'm going for this evening, so we'll skip over that one, shall we? So I've been to a lot of graduations, both as a spectator and as a participant, like yourself. I love to learn. I relish this, this community of thinkers and experiences, um, actually the experience of college. And I can't tell you how many speakers have stood in an approximation to where I am standing and said the words, this is it. You are closing the book on this part of your life. I simply can't stand that. This is it. The end. No, impossible. This, uh, is this part of your life done with? What an unintentionally melancholy call to make. The beanstalk has been chopped down and the giant fell, go home. Go off and lead the life informed by your experiences here and here alone. This is your happily ever after. 
but it's not. Don't allow it to be. You've all taken a great risk every day for two, four, or more years to be here today, and look where you are now. You're moments away from receiving a college-level degree where here on a spectacular intimate campus with professors, staff, and family who know the risks you've taken, the crocodile-infested lakes you've waded through to be here today, the magic lamps you've lost and found, the dark forests you've stumbled through, those frogs... Sorry, never mind. But you can't stop now. You can't let this be the close of any book, any chapter, or even the sentence. Every day you wake up should be your once upon a time. Because every day is an adventure, a chance to take a risk. Nothing beyond this evening will be any less good or any less wicked. There are still mountains to scale, dragons to overcome, trolls to clap back on on social media. If I am to charge you, let me charge you to understand that there are greater things to learn and do and become every day. It's also a brave choice you must make. Sell the cow for beans, they might be magic. You must start every dawn with a once upon a time. Have adventures, meet new people, become more interesting, become something you never thought you could ever be. Welcome the adversaries and the impossible odds. You've made it through thousands of once upon a times already. Why not go again? Why not make every day a story worth telling? I think if you live every day in a perfume of new and exciting possibilities, whether they be difficult or easy, live always in the realm of the challenging, the cliffhanger, and the exciting, just as you have every day during your time here at Ohio University Southern. In essence, live the perpetual once upon a time. You know, the renowned fantasy author Neil Gaiman once said, fairy tales are more than true, not because they tell us that dragons exist, but because they tell us that dragons can be beaten. So go out and find some, over and over and over again, ever after. Thank you. It is now that time to recognize our graduates, which I know is the reason that all of you are here. Will all associate degree candidates please rise at this time and come forward. Shannon Frazee, outstanding graduate associate in science, Bachelor of Science in Middle Childhood Education, Spirit of Southern Award, Ohio Honors Program. Savannah Justice. Savannah Miller. Mariah Rotter.
Trey Nestor. Justin Castle. Derek McAllister. <laughs> Emily Schwamberger. <laughs> Allison Penix. Alexis Wise. Jenna Dial. Kimberly Mullins. Amber Michaels. Amanda Clay. Dawn Etzinger. Beth Douglas, Outstanding Graduate, Associate in Applied Science, Medical Assisting Technology. Zachary Haynes. Dale Calicote. Outstanding Graduate, Associate in Applied Business, Business Management Technology. Edward DeLauder. Connor McKenzie, Associate of Applied Science, Electronic Media. Please be seated. Will all bachelor's degree candidates please rise at this time and come forward. <laughs> Shannon Frazee, <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Middle Childhood Education. Cameron Zorns, Outstanding Graduate, Bachelor of Science in Health, Health Services Administration. Applause 
Mackenzie Reidenauer, Outstanding Graduate Bachelor of Science in Psychology. Sarah Day. Ashley Stamper, Outstanding Graduate, Bachelor of Criminal Justice. Angela Grant. Kirsten Howe. Skylar Windsor. Natalie Wright. Madeline Whaley, Outstanding Graduate, Bachelor of Social Work. Austin Riddle, Bachelor of Science, Childhood Education. Carson Bailey. Sarah Snowden. Emma Lester. Sarah Wheeler, Outstanding Graduate, Bachelor of Science in Education, Early Childhood. Caitlin Saunders, Outstanding Graduate, Bachelor of Science in Education, Middle Childhood, Language Arts, and Social Studies. Race Williams. Jenna Rollins. Paula Reisner. Leanne Spradlin. Haley Sturgill. Nathaniel Crabtree, Associate in Applied Science, Law Enforcement Technology, Bachelor of Criminal Justice. <laughs> Leslie Nall. Gary Lang. <laughs> Haley Jones.
Mackenia Hughes. Carolina Janos. Sarah Widdison. Allison Steele. Outstanding graduate, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Bailey Wagner. Hunter Crum. Brenna Daniel. Gabriel Griffith. Cassandra Metzger. Allison France. Connor Archer. Rachel Brown. Krista Abrams. Matthew Lewis, outstanding graduate, Bachelor of Specialized Studies, Ohio Honors Program. Adam Holsinger, Outstanding Graduate, Bachelor of Arts, English Creative Writing.
please be seated. Will the faculty please rise? Congratulations, graduates. The faculty would like to lead a round of applause for you to show you how much we appreciate the hard work that you've put in over these last two, four, six plus years for some of you. Congratulations. left my glasses down there, but I think it's big enough that I can read it. <laughs> Graduates, what you have learned at Ohio University Southern will resonate throughout your life as you grow both professionally and personally. And your experiences will help you navigate the many challenges that you will encounter in life. Your education is something that no one can take away from you. Use it wisely and never stop learning. As you begin your new journey, I hope that you will remember Ohio University Southern with fond memories. On behalf of Ohio University Southern, it is an honor to congratulate you and wish you the very best in your life and in your future career. Graduates, please stand. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to present to you the Ohio University Southern Fall Class of 2022 and the Spring Class of 2023. If graduates will remain standing, we will begin the recessional. And compliments of the Ohio Alumni Association, graduates will receive an Ohio cookie as we dismiss. And please, <laughs> and please feel free to take lots and lots of pictures and use the backdrop and enjoy the rest of your night. 